Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So today we have another experiment for you guys today and that is playing around with everything we know about custom turret controllers. Alright, so as simple as it is, this is a custom turret controller. The large grid version, of course the small grid version, is very similar. And that would be this little guy here in the small grid version. Takes up a lot less space. <laughs> Alright, so what does a custom turret controller do? It gives us the ability to maneuver with either rotors or hinges left, right, and up and down. So this is where you can assign your azimuth rotor or hinge, which would be left and right. And then you have your assign elevation rotor up and down. And of course you can tie it with a weapon, a camera, or any tools you have here. And of course you could use this as a auto turret in a sense, where it's very similar to your regular turrets that you have in game. So you could do a lot with it in some ways. And of course you can use rotors and also hinges or a combination of the two. So here's for an example, we have a two rotors set up one for our left and right or horizontal planes or azimuth as I've mentioned and then we have elevations up and down here so in this placement of the rotors we can easily program our um, custom turret controller to do that all right just jumping into all the setups here skipping all like the screen content stuff like that here's your left and right the azimuth we're going to use the advanced rotor. You have to know which one it is. It's going to be this one here for me, for me right now. Your elevation up and down is your second one, which is going to be this one here. You could have always named them. <laughs> and of course, it'll tell you the status of it here as well. Nominal, the artillery used as aiming reference. And what that means is because I have the artillery as the weapon or tool added that select there. So right now, um, other than... Well, we just mentioned we can also add a camera. We have a camera. We don't have one here, so it's none. And you can add the velocity and speed of these. So the default is nine, but if you flipped your hinge around the wrong way around for your up and down, unless you would prefer it to be reversed, you, this would be defaulted to nine. But I changed it to negative nine that's because it made more sense to be up and down that way. And this can go to a maximum of 30. So that's not too, too bad. And then you have your angle deviation, which is a turret. We'll shoot only if the angle to the target is less than this deviation that you set up here. Not going to play around with that too, too much. Um, but other than that, yeah, you add your artillery. I mean, your weapons or your tools, whatever the case is. So you have that there. I mean, if you don't have it on whatsoever, it says error must have a linked weapon or tool. But that doesn't really mean too much because you could still maneuver it and you can still shoot it if you need to. As you see there. So even with the error not linking the turret or the artillery on here, you can still shoot it. Why? Because you could just set it up down here just to say shoot once, hit three, and it'll shoot. So that's one way of doing it. The other way to doing it, the better way to doing it actually is actually using the custom turret controller. You could Add the tool as it was before. Now it's nominal artillery, artillery used as aiming reference. Now when we hit control, so for an example, we have to put the custom turret controller as control here. So we just drag it down to the box and hit control, or you can put whatever you want, but control is what we're using right now. So we hit one for control. Now we can move it left and right, up and down. And now we can do a left click shooting style and also targeting with right click if you wanted to but here we're gonna right we're gonna left click and shoot our artillery like so <laughs> that shot that ship pretty far back that's pretty cool so that's your custom turret controller in a nutshell right other than what i just did there what you can also do is turn it into a turret or auto turret you want to enable the AI. So once you enable the AI, you can tell it to target whatever you want. Similar to like um, 
the regular turrets that you had, like a Gatlin turrets, missile turrets, back in the day before the update with all these weapons. So you could you could tell it to, to those targeting systems as it is, and adding on to naval locking and things like that. And one last thing that you can do also is add a action. So how this works is it is it if it is locked into the target or looking at the target specifically, that's going to be action one here. And when it's not, it's going to be action two. So take kind of like the sensor. If you're in the sensor field, this is one. And if you're not in the sensor field, it's just action number two. So that's how that works. So that's your basics of the custom turret controller. So what can we do with it? What fun stuff can we apply to this turret system? All right, so the best thing about this whole turret system is you could add a whole bunch of weapons if you wanted to. So if we didn't want to just have, you know, our artillery there, we wanted to add a big O railgun, we would be able to do that as such. And what we want to do there is add it all into the custom turret controllers, weapons and tools. So right now we have three weapons here. We could have all three or all four of them listed so we can shoot it with one click of a button instead of hitting separate keys down on the bottom. So if I hit control here, you see that I'm controlling left, right, up and down for the three artilleries and the rail gun. So once I shoot in three, two, one, all three of them or all four of them will fire. So we're going to test that in three, two, one. The, the real gun initially didn't shoot for some odd reason and may have been based on an order potentially. Um, so we're going to give that a quick little test to make sure that wasn't the case. All right, so I'm not sure what had kind of caused that order if there was an order change, but basically it's not doing the same thing as it did before. So I had the artillery first, artillery two and three as the secondary and the rail gun, rail gun last added and it's not doing exactly what it did before and everything's still added here so we're gonna fire this in three two one fire and that seems to be working pretty well and I can't believe I actually hit that target to be honest so not sure why I didn't shoot in the first place but as you can see, you could tack on a whole bunch of weapons here if you really, really needed to or wanted to. So with that, you can even tack on a bunch more of rail guns if this thing can really hold it. <laughs> and it looks like we are able to a bit. It's swaying a little much, but it's still going to be okay. So. Of course, we got to add the ones we put here. Right here, real guns two, three, and four that we can have them there. See, now we add them, it ends up on the bottom. So I don't think, I don't know if it's going to work now. But let's give it a test. Three, two, one, fire. Yeah, so it's not firing for whatever reasons when it's kind of in that weird order or when you add it on the tail end of it so I think you have to remove them all and then add them all again for some reason or you have to add them in one menu add and not in in two separate ways so now we should be able to test it in three two one they should all fire yep they all fire but the previously was have everything here added added rail gun two three and four after I came back in let me see if that does the same thing. And we're going to add two, three, four, and it added towards the bottom. Okay. So, because I guess because we added the rail guns afterwards and then came back in, it put it on the bottom for whatever reasons. And apparently, when it's on the bottom, if you do it in that weird order, it's not going to shoot. So, that's interesting, probably little bug that might be happening there. And it also looks like I can no longer move it up and down which I've experienced that of a kind of a little bit of a glitch at 1.2 but we'll just leave it as that yes 
custom turret controllers. You can add a whole bunch of things to it and do whatever you like in that sense. Um, before we move on to these two, let's talk about the setup option as we mentioned before. So I'm going to set it to nighttime really quick. So here's a little spotlight that we have, or it's kind of like the searchlight, same kind of kind of concept, right? All right, here we go. So you have your searchlight here, which works the same way as it will follow you based on what you add into the criteria. And here is a searchlight that we, a custom searchlight that is using the custom turret controller, which is done by adding rotor, a hinge system, search, a light, and a camera. So once we get into the settings here, you see right here, nominal camera used as aiming reference. So you have the advanced rotor on the bottom, the hinge on the up and down. You have the camera to, to be able to follow you or see you. What I found interesting is that this is not assigned. You cannot add the AI auto or, or activate the AI. So you must have some kind of tool, weapon, or camera for that to work. So if you assign the camera, you can now enable the AI. So I have the AI enabled and it's targeting characters, um, neutrals and friends right now. That's why it's following me. And the fun part I did with the setup actions is I have it to toggle on when it's targeting a character and toggle off when it's not targeting a character. But right now it's can't, it can't, I'm a little too low, so it can't really get to me. So that's why it's not turning on. But once I go up, it's locked onto me or it's looking at me and it's turned on. If I get faster away from it, it turns off as you see there. And then it turns back on once it's got me locked in. That's a little fun little aspect there. I feel like there's a lot more experimenting to go on around there with that kind of triggers. But I think that would be pretty interesting to do. All right. So other fun things we can do is create a crane system with the custom turret controller. It won't be the smoothest crane in the world. It will be multiple steps you would want to kind of use. So in this case, you're going to use two different custom turret controllers, which you could bunch in a lot more if you wanted to. So getting into this little helm system here, we'll show you kind of an example of that. So I have custom controller one on the bottom. It's just left, right, up, down as usual, right? So nothing too crazy there as you see. And then we have to press F to get out of here. Well, if you're using PC, and then you go into the second custom controller, which is going to be right down here. And that's going to control the one up top right here above the piston head. So you have the up down motion here and you have your left and right with the rotor. And of course, the tool is tied on to, to both custom controller turrets of anything So you can left click or right click. Or, yeah, you can left click or I was going to say right click drill, but once you right click, you actually target instead of right click drilling in this case. So that's not going to work out. But at least here, we could stretch it out. So, again, you have to always exit out of it to, to activate the other um, turret controller, which that's the hassle part of making a crane system with it. But it's a modless way of making a crane system, which is pretty cool. So we're in custom turret controller one and we can bring this all the way down you exit custom turret number two we can bring this even closer down spin it whatever you want and start collecting with the drill so that's one way of using this another way to use this is turn on the ai and have it target you or an object or whatever the case is and let it try to follow you that might work i'm not sure <laughs> but we can test that really quickly actually it might react in a really funky way if both of them are on. I know this is the one closest to the drill. So let's just try this one really quick. We're going to enable the AI very far away. Let's just turn everything off. And in terms of it following, except for neutrals and friends. And it's following me <laughs> on the drill sign. It's very wobbly. All right, so that's okay. 
Now, if we did the same thing to the first one, what is going to happen? Let's get that a test. All right, so we're going to turn this one on and let's see. Okay, so it does kind of direct both of them pretty well. Interesting. So if I go further from the top one, the one on the bottom is going to start working a little bit on itself. It's very wobbly, <laughs> but it seems to be working. It is not going to drill unless you just turn it on, of course, but this is... An interesting way of drilling, if necessary, but obviously not the best way, and it's it's super, super wobbly. Ow. <laughs> it just swung me. Or swung at me. So that's a... Okay, so that might be an interesting weapon we can use. Some kind of bat system or, or battering ram system. Interesting. <laughs> Where it's just hitting me pretty hard. And it might actually break some stuff too. So let's just turn the AI off here. That was a fun little test there. But we'll leave that alone. Another thing I did was create this guy here, which is a connector system with using the same crane system. That way you can connect to ships, um, rovers, or whatever the case is, easier sometimes. Instead of, you know, maneuvering your ship or your rover backwards, forward, whatever the case is, to park it. So this is a nice little fun way to do so as well. So same setup. Control 1 is the bottom left and up and down. Control 2, it has the camera sign, but... If you press F, you exit the camera, and you still control that piece there on the top, as you see. And something I added here, as as you saw in the previous one, had a piston, but that wasn't designed cor correctly at the time. But also, I did something with the piston, so then that way, if you did have a, a crane system where you need to extend with the piston, we could do it this way. And you kind of had to program it in a very specific way using timer blocks so here you'll see all right so i had to set it to daytime really quick but as i was saying for the timer blocks we have timer block one two for trigger now and what that does is basically telling the timer block here's the actions extend the piston to increase the maximum distance and to increase the minimum distance and of course the opposite of that would be to decrease maximum um retract the piston and decrease the minimum distance why i did that is so we can do this um, if looking at the piston itself we hit five as the key to increase max extend and increase the minimum distance so when we press it i'm gonna hit five right now you see that it's gonna go up a little bit and i think it's 0.5 increments that should be one meter as you see right here right here is about one meter so i put this here just to see the numbers so if i hit it again it still says one meter but it's 1.5 and then two that way you have little increments to stretch out your crane system there and then once you've done with that of course you can control the crane top piece bottom piece and with that extension so that's going to help a bit there but that's an interesting way to make it extend and of course, the opposite of that is going to give 5.5 increments backwards. So it'll stop at each 0.5 slowly going backwards this way. So if you get too far out, you can always bring it back this way. So that gives you some control for this crane system. Um, I do like the script a little bit better. The piston rotor hinge script that you can assign keys to and the mouse to control the crane. But this is if you don't have a, if you don't want to use a script or anything, this is the probably the closest and be best thing that I have in mind in terms of creating crane with the system. It's still a lot of buttons, but it's doable. And of course, the beauty of it, of them all that I created with this system, a crane arm with a little bit of a grabber, as you see here. So then it's assigned with a little camera as well. So as simple as it is, the same exact system, rotor hinge piston rotor hinge add another rotor here just to get the small head to add the grabber and the grabber has these little magnetic plates right on each square so here for an example let me just get in here now if we hit 
the grabber to close. You see that it'll close this way. And not too bad. And if we need to, we can lock the magnetic plates there. That's a fun little thing to do with this. And what I was doing with it as well was actually grabbing this guy here, which is the custom controller turret itself. So what I did there is basically same thing, right? The whole notion of control one is the bottom left, right, up and down. And we should try to get close to it as much as possible, which looks right about good right around there exit go to custom control 2 we're gonna swing it down this way hopefully we don't break anything just yet and that looks pretty promising okay exit that one go back to one that way we could bring it down a little bit more and as I mentioned before if we're not extending enough let's go by that 0.5 increment we'll hit our 5 key and then we can bring it down some more as well. Then from there, looks like we're touching it. We finally close the grabber. So let's get a better angle of that really quick. So you see here, we're going to hit the grabber to close. And it's going to grab or try to grab it as much as possible. At this point, we can lock it if we want to. Or we can start bringing it up a little bit more for it to grab. So right now, it's actually not even locked. I'm able to grab it. But if I had to, I could lock it there. The little fun little crane arm, little aesthetic looking thing. Even some, Not even just aesthetics. You can just use this as something practical <laughs> in some ways. Um, so no mods, no scripts. Crane and crane with the custom turret controller. So another fun thing I thought about doing was actually use it to control the rotors to make wheels. But I found an issue with that is because, and that would be because you cannot create groupings of rotors and things like that or hinges. So this here is a grouping of hinges, right? And if we go to any random custom turret controller, and try to sign that group, whether it's the azimuth, azimuth or the elevation, you cannot select them. So you can only choose one of those pieces at a time only, which is unfortunate. So no wheel system, unless we want to go on a one wheel drive and go in a circle, that would probably be what's going to work out. But this was a fun little experiment and a little bit of a how to of pretty much the whole entire custom turret controller. I hope you guys have fun with it. I hope this sparks some interesting ideas as well. Uh, wasn't necessarily meant to be a full guide, but uh, something fun we could do with this new block. And it helps so that we don't have to use mods and scripts to make these things, which is always a pretty cool aspect to this game. All right, not sure why sometimes the emotes tend to break after a recording session. But of course, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up, like the video, drop a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.